Hi guys, today we are hosting an amazing guest and I'm so happy to introduce to you a beloved author of Captive Prince, uh, C.S. Pacat, who agreed to come here and answer some questions about this series. So thank you so much for coming to Poland and doing this with us. We are super excited to have you here. Thank you so much um, for having me here. I'm loving Poland. Oh, that's great to hear. Um, so recently we asked people if they have any question for our guest and well yes they did <laughs> the rohan has answered there were so <laughs> many questions that we really have to narrow them down uh, because we just don't have uh, days or weeks to do this recording sadly uh, but i have to warn you guys that there might be some spoilers from the trilogy so if you haven't read it yet please come back to this video after you fix that flaw and uh well, when it comes to the first volume, since it's uh, released in Poland for the first time, we will avoid talking about it today. Okay, so let's start with the first question. Uh, what inspired you to start writing and were there any authors or books uh, that somehow influenced your writing? Um, so I grew up in the 80s and 90s and there are not a lot of queer books available at that time especially not in the world of fantasy and sci-fi. Um, so the few books that there were were very, very important to me. Um, one that I remember held a special place to me was Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice. Um, and I really remember the feeling of discovering that book and the kind of electric connection that you, f that you really only feel when you see yourself in a novel. Um, and at that time, you know, uh, the experience of being queer was to be an outsider and to be portrayed, you know, as a as a dangerous or as a monster in popular culture. Um, but Anne Rice kind of took that idea and turned the queer monster into something that was also beautiful and powerful and cool, escapist. Um, and I, I loved those books. Um, and so, you know, I wanted to write a series that that I guess uh, the me of that time would have wanted to read, um, you know, a high octane escapism, epic kind of fantasy feels, but also with queer main characters and a powerful love story. So uh, how did you came up with the idea for Captive Prince? It was Anne Rice inspired or um, something else? And did you anticipate it, it becoming such a huge success? So I did not anticipate that it would be a huge <laughs> success at all. Um, again, because there were, there were just no books like that on shelves at that time. The only place that I was really seeing a lot of queer fiction um, was online, uh, where there was a huge community writing queer fan fiction. Um, and there were also some LGBT web novels and original web serials. Um, so I thought, oh, that's what my book must be. Like, this is a story for the internet. Um, so I was serializing it online. Um, and, um, and it was lucky enough I was lucky enough that it went viral um, but even then I tried to get it published uh, once it was sort of viral online um, but I think it was a little bit still too early for the market and I got you know I think the kindest reply I got was we just don't think there's a market for this book so I self-published um, and when I did that's when the book took off it started hitting number one across lists in the US and in my home country of Australia um, and, uh, and that was when a US agent approached me and the book ended up selling to Penguin Random House in the US. Um, so, but in a million years, I didn't imagine that that would ever happen. Um, as for where the idea came from, because I was thinking that it was just a story for me, I remember that I sat down with, and I thought, if this is just a book for me, I want to put all my favorite things in it. I sat down and I wrote a list of my favorite things from um, from books and media, and the list was kind of you know ridiculous. I had things like princes and sword fights, um, chases, escapes, um, and uh, I remember that it also had hot guys with unbearable tensions between them. Was one item thanks on the list? Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and thanks for the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so. What does your creative process looks like? Do you plot out the entire story in advance or do you came up with the plot as you go? So I plot out everything in advance. Um, I think of it as like, I do have some friends who 
they're in like a flow state all the time. So they just kind of, they're constantly in a slipstream of ideas and they're just writing and it comes out. I'm not like that. Um, I have to work very hard for my ideas. Um, so I think of them as like, they just get on the wild horse of their idea and just gallop off and see where it takes them. Whereas for me, I ride dressage. I tell the story exactly where I want it to go. And I do plan everything out uh, in advance. And I think like, it's, it's maybe less obvious with Captive Prince, although I think when, if you were to ever read Captive Prince a second time, I think you can see that it has been planned because there's stuff that's happening in the beginning that isn't obvious until yes, you finish. Definitely. And that is even more than so the case um, with Dark Rise. Uh, there's just no way that you could write the ending of Dark Rise without without knowing in advance <laughs> i'm so excited for the fall to come yeah. i'm so excited for you to all to read it yeah and they are all very excited i'm sure <laughs> because they were asking all over um, all the time about dark rise so we are very happy that we could finally announce it <laughs> um so um what were some uh, what were the challenges you faced uh, while writing the Captive Prince trilogy and how did you overcome them? So I think, you know, Captive Prince is my first series and when you when you write your first book, there's a huge learning curve. Um, and it's not just that you have to learn how to write a book, you really have to change yourself from someone who cannot write a book into someone who can write a book. And that is a uh, a fairly extreme process. So for me, there was all sorts of things that I had to learn. Um, you know, I had to learn basic writing skills like plotting and characterization, but I also had to learn a lot of personal skills. Um, I had to improve my concentration. Uh, I had to learn sort of um, the kind of self-motivated and dedicated work ethic that you need to be able to write a book. Like when you're writing a book, you basically have to sit down and concentrate on abstract concepts for like eight hours a day, every day. <laughs> and usually like when people are writing their first job with book, which is the same for me, you're doing it while you have a job as well. So, um, so I think, but then I think actually like the hardest challenge for me was um, uh, actually dealing with like, you spend so much of your time just alone with your own thoughts. Um, and I think unusually for a writer, I'm a huge extrovert. <laughs> I love spending time with people. So I also found the aloneness of writing to be a big challenge. So was there any scene that was particular, particularly fighting with you that was so hard to... Uh... Yeah, the sex scenes. <laughs> like, they were so yeah, hard tricky. to write. Yeah, and, um, and I think it was for two reasons. Like, one... Um, especially the first sex scene in Captive Prince, which is in Prince's Gambit. And I was so aware. So at that time, like I was writing the book as a web serial. So it'd be coming out sort of like monthly. And there were people that had been reading the book for like two years, following month by month as I released chapters. And, um, and I was so aware that they were just waiting for this sex scene. So I actually felt so much performance anxiety about that scene. <laughs> like I really wanted to make it worth the wait. So um, I was nervous about it. But then there was also a kind of a technical writing challenge because the first sex scene in the book comes, you know, in book two and there's still so much of the series left to go. And I think sex, much like violence, like can let a lot of the tension out of a story. So I was trying to figure out how do I keep the story really tense and um, full of forward momentum, even though it's had this huge catharsis of the sex. So it's like, how do you write a sex scene that remains tense the whole way through so that was like a difficult challenge to figure out and i guess laurent was harder <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly yeah but that was very good writing i was so excited <laughs> and uh, i felt that tense all the time <laughs> during the scene so great work <laughs> um okay so <laughs> this is funny uh what was the most uh, the hardest or the weirdest uh, research you had to do for Captive Prince? For Captive Prince, um, the weirdest research was probably, so it's, it's got a country that's sort of like medieval France and a country that's sort of like ancient Greece pastiche with like ancient Rome. And um, 
I was trying to figure out, do ancient Greek men wear underpants? Oh. Like what? <laughs> That's a good question. What is Damon wearing underneath the chiton? And, um, and I learned that like, like slaves in ancient Rome would wear like a loincloth, but it was not well known what did citizens wear underneath the skirts. Yeah. Um, and so that was probably the weirdest research and the weirdest like, oh, this is a historical mystery <laughs> actually. <laughs> so, um, so I never mentioned it in the books. I just kind of like skipped over it. But my personal <laughs> concept is that maybe they don't wear underpants every day, like for the every day, but if they're horse riding, I hope them wearing it. <laughs> yeah, <hope> so too. <laughs> yeah. For their sake. Yeah, for their yeah. sake, exactly. Um, okay, so uh, one of the questions was about uh, if there were uh, some real life places and or historical periods uh, that inspired world building in Captive Prince, which we uh, just... Uh, <laughs> answered yeah so it was uh ancient greece and medieval france so it is a true pastiche because if if ancient greece and medieval france were actually next to each other and went to war obviously france will win just from <laughs> technology <Yeah. laughs> um but um but uh i took for example um all of the names for the country of via came from an old Paris census from 1463, which is around about where the time period that I was drawing the inspiration from. Um, so there's a lot of like old French names and sort of weird French spellings. Um, so, um, you know, yeah, for the French readers, I know that they can find the names like old fashioned or strange or, but yeah, it's because it's from that older time period. Um, okay. So, um, Next question is uh, was like um, readers really asked that, asked that many times. Uh, so how did you like Polish edition? Oh, I love the <laughs> Polish edition. I love the Polish edition. It's like it's just one of my favorite editions. Oh. And um, I don't know, um, uh, uh, you know, at the time that the Polish edition came out, it was the first edition to have any kind of illustration on the front. And not only that, it was the first edition to show any kind of queer vibes on the cover. So when Captive Prince came out, it was like 10 years ago and there weren't a lot of books like that. And every publisher was scared of the LGBT content. So all the covers from that time period, are they're just so mysterious and they have like a weird object on the front. You can't, symbolism. The symbolism. Neutral. You, you cannot tell what the book is about from looking at the cover. And then I remember when the Polish editions came out and I was just like, oh my God, they just went for it. Um, <laughs> I was so happy. Um, like I felt this huge sense of like, oh, you know, um, finally someone has put the book's content on the book's cover. It was really a wonderful feeling. So I'm really, and then I think, you know, you guys were a forerunner because since then a lot of the other foreign yeah. publishers have kind of followed the <laughs> Polish example. So I'm really grateful to Poland for that. We are very happy about that, about that because when we were, uh, were when we both uh, write for Captive Prince, yeah. uh, like we saw that there was like, nothing to based on when it comes to cover i think japan was the only uh like country who went for actual pictures of the characters this yeah. way but they were like manga style and yes our goal was we had like one goal to make laurent and damon like super hot <laughs> <laughs> well mission accomplished <laughs> so um so also i have a question yeah was uh, our version far or close to what uh, the character looked like in your head so i have to admit that um i i don't see pictures in my head oh so apparently this is like a like a, a, a like a semi-rare condition that they call aphantasia where i can't see pictures even when i dream i don't dream in pictures oh. so in a way i don't have my own sense of them Oh, so it's good in a way. It just means that I can enjoy every different version. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one. But good yeah, thing um, for I a do writer. love the look of the Polish um, illustrations. They're great. <laughs> we are very proud of them. Yeah, and we the new interior illustrations are so good as well. Yeah, thank you so yeah. much. We wanted to add something extra because we like to look at those guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so we are very happy. <laughs> um, 
Okay, when it comes to fans' reaction, uh, do your characters or plot twist ever um, make them surprise you? Like, um, any reaction was for you uh, shocking? Or um, what was the most me memorable piece of feedback you received from the fans? Yeah, so the <laughs> so when I first started writing Captive Prince, um, I had about 30,000 words of a first draft that really wasn't working. And the reason that wasn't working was that I was trying to make Laron much too likable from the beginning. Or rather, I, I was making Damon like him way too early. Um, and I, I realized like, oh, right, you have to hate him at the beginning. Like he has to be hate, like detestable. Uh, everyone has to really hate him. And then when I started to serialize it online, I started to get these reactions from people hating him. And I was like, oh no, they hate him. <laughs> but actually people hated him so much in those early days that they didn't even understand that he was going to be the love interest. Oh and I remember that people were really shipping Damon with the regent because oh. he seemed like this nice, kind, older man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I was wrong. like, oh my God, this has all gone so horribly wrong. And I was just like, I just had to hope that and trust in my vision for the book that people would eventually uh, come around. And I think they did. Yes, you have absolute talent for make the, make like redeeming uh, the characters, like because the, 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 there wasn't only Laurent, there was few characters that you absolutely change your mind about when you go on with the series, and that's yeah. amazing. And that was really important for me as well. Like I, especially for Laurent, I didn't really want him to change. I just wanted the reader's understanding of yeah. him to change. Um, and so for that kind of shift in thinking to happen as you learn more about his context and his situation. That's that's a good one. <laughs> um, okay, so um, do you ever read any fan fiction set uh, in the world of Captive Prince? No. Uh, <laughs> and the reason is um, I just don't want to be influenced by it. So, you know, uh, and that's the same for Dark Rise as well. If I come up with an idea, I want to know that it's completely my own idea. Um, and I think, you know, even though Captive Prince is finished, um, I still just want to make sure like, oh, what if I want to write an, a new story someday? I just want to know that that's my story. So, but also I just think like there, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm the kind of author that, um, you know, I love readers' creativity, but, but I don't, feel like that's my that's that's their that's a reader space for them to you know be free and creative um i don't want anyone to feel like the author might <laughs> pop up <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> like a weird stalker <laughs> um and so um so i try and leave that as a private space for readers okay i understand absolutely um but is there any um crossover guilty pleasure fantasy yeah <laughs> you think you uh, would be like good to explore for example like Damon and Laurent going to Hogwarts or uh, <laughs> invading seven kingdoms in Game of Thrones <laughs> like have you ever wow. fantasized about things like that because apparently our readers do <laughs> oh that's really funny um yeah oh, that's um like this answer is really boring, but like, no, I don't. Because if I fantasize about them, it's in their own, like the Captive Prince is my fantasy world of them. So, uh, so I imagine them in their, in their own Proper world. Universe. Yeah. Um, I think, um, uh, and I, for me, at least, I think the most interesting part of their story is now told. Um, so, but every now and again, I do wonder about like what might they might do in the future. Um, I think the child of your cast is like an interesting problem for them because, you know, Laurent killed that kid's dad. So I don't think that kid would be very happy with with Laurent yeah, probably. <laughs> so, um, so yeah I, sometimes I wonder there might be some interesting possibilities there yeah there there are there we are hoping you don't close this door forever <laughs> <laughs> um okay so um 
What character do you relate to the most and which is your favorite or it is the same one? Like in the series? Yeah. Um, I think they're all pieces of me. Um, but I, I suppose I can say in what ways. Like Damon is really strongly born out of like my, I guess, ethnic identity in Australia. Um, in Australia, there's like a, a kind of a strong ethnic divide between Anglo-Australians and like Greeks, Italians, Lebanese people, um, people from the Mediterranean basin of Europe, basically. So my family is Italian and, um, and so, you know, a lot of my um, cultural heritage is in Damon. And I think, um, you know, the experiences that I've had um, trying to navigate, you know, I've lived overseas a lot and I know the feeling of entering a world that is so different from your own uh, and you're, you're a stranger there, but then that place changes you <laughs> and then you're a stranger to your home when you go home you can never really go home again you can you cannot come back to shire after being yes gone you can't go back to the shire <laughs> exactly exactly so yeah. um yeah so there's a lot of me in damon and then laurent like um you know uh uh my own sort of childhood and family background it's not like an exact match to his but i do have some things in common with him and um, I think it was really important for me, like whenever, like often, especially in fantasy and sci-fi, like when I've seen like characters that have come from like a abusive or, or difficult childhood or upbringing, that often I, I kept seeing them portrayed as like broken or like crying in the shower and like, um, and I, uh, it was very important for me to kind of write a version of that character that is like their damage in a way was a form of strength, even as it continued to damage them moving forward. So I think, you know, there's stuff in my own past that I was exploring with his character as well. And that tends to be the case for all my characters in different series. Like there, there'll always be a facet of me in there somewhere. Um, and um, and so, so, yeah, I relate a little bit to everyone. I think if I didn't relate to them, I'd find them pretty hard to write. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um... Okay, so little lighter subject. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what are the most important uh, lessons yeah. Laurent uh, uh, and Damon uh, have learned from each other? Because they influence each mm. other so much during the trilogy. They do. I think, um, you know, I built them as characters to be almost as opposite as possible and for one's strengths to be the other's weaknesses and vice versa. So I think, for example... Um, you know, Damon is someone that is very straightforward and often sees the world in black and white. Uh, he's direct and he's a man of action uh, and he's used to uh, occupying a place of power. Whereas like Laurent, even though he is a prince from a, quite a young age, he's had to maneuver from a position of disadvantage, which means he can't be direct. Um, and um, he can't necessarily simply act because avenues of action are cut off from him by circumstance. So he must be indirect. He has to maneuver in different ways. He obviously sees the world in like shades of gray. And to him, uh, you know, he can be overly complex at times. So I think they each have to, something to learn from the other. It's not good to always trust everyone, <laughs> but it's not good to trust no one. <laughs> um, and, um, and, you know, sometimes uh, you do have to be a Machiavell, but at sometimes it's just easy to cut through the Gordian knot. Um, so, um, so I think they're very complementary. There is a sense in which they're only sort of one fully functional person when they're together. <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, <laughs> that's funny because next question yeah. <laughs> is about layman. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Um, regarding the scene when Laurent uh, introduces Damon uh, to Charles as layman, yeah, um, was using her ship name <laughs> yeah. intentional or coincidental? Well, it was before it was their ship name, <laughs> so I think um, it was intentional that it was a portmanteau. Um, and uh, I think, like, I always like the, 
I always like the stupidest possible version of the ship name. <laughs> like, um, I really liked Wames in uh, Dark Rises, the ship name. <laughs> but um, it's not always the most popular one. But, um, but I think at the time that I was writing book three, there was a few different versions of ship name that were floating around. And uh, I don't even know if Layman was one of them yet. I think some readers will know that better than I will. But yeah, I just thought, I thought it was very funny. Um, it it's, I mean, it's obviously funny because it's not, <laughs> it's not a very good mystery name. It's only one letter different. Um, but it's also a pun because the word layman, you know, means Lame. something in English. In English. Oh yeah, I guess there's the, <laughs> that word as well, though. It's, that's a bit, that's a bit of iffy a, a usage, but, um, but layman is a, is an English word. Um, and so, so yeah, um, uh, it wasn't fully on purpose, but I, I don't, I don't hate the result. I love the result. Yeah, <laughs> the, uh, result really. Um, okay, so let's talk about Jord. Yeah. Uh, so this is the character. Wait, who... but in Polish, would you say Jord? Jord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was trying to. <laughs> I have trouble to switch for original <laughs> names. So sorry if I pronounce it some. Uh, no, I think it's really great that it's <laughs> the names are pronounced differently country by country. Yeah, it would in Poland. It would be like. Uh, Damen, Laurent, Jord. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I just came from France and I, people kept asking me, like, how do you pronounce Nikkei's? And I kept saying, like, I don't know your French. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, Jord. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the character who has have the worst timing. Like, <laughs> if there's something that is not supposed to be seen or heard, right. there's Jord. <laughs> yep. um, and uh, was he created specifically <laughs> for plot twists? Or did this, uh, his sense of morality naturally place him in this moment because reader can never be sure how he will decide, what he will decide to do? <laughs> I mean, he, <laughs> he wasn't created only to... Um, <laughs> to <laughs> impede our heroes from having a good time um uh no i made him as like a mirror i think for the main couple you know him and Amerik are like a mirror version of uh laura and damon and i think um you know i like to play with mirrors a lot in books so you know they'll there's a few different characters that you can kind of see reflections of Damon Laurent in because I, l I like the way that it's like it shows a, a path not traveled you know there's a way that Damon and Laurent might have ended up like Jordan Amrick uh, and vice versa if things had just gone slightly differently um, so that was the real reason why he was created um, so he had some parts different <laughs> yeah <laughs> aside then, from this yeah and then I, I didn't realize, like, I do plan everything in, in advance. One of the few changes from the plan was that I hadn't realized until quite late into book two that I needed a character to discover Damon's identity before it was commonly known. And that that would create, like, this level of tension and anxiety in the back half of the book that wouldn't exist if that hadn't already been seen. So... Uh, when I realized, like, oh, someone has to find out, then I looked around to find the character, and there he was. <laughs> but, um, but I think um, by that point, he was kind of an interesting character to give that revelation to because Damon had taken George's role by then, um, and you know. Jord was in trouble for being a traitor, but the real traitor or the real liar, the betrayer in the group was Damon. Um, uh, and he was doing something that was like way worse than <laughs> what Jord was doing. Um, so I thought that gave them an interesting interplay. Um, and then once Jord was the only one who knew, then he had to be the one that kept turning up and seeing things. It just, yeah, because he was the most interesting person then to barge in. I remember reading this scene and thinking that anybody else would hear that uh, information, we would know what he, he would do. And with mm. George, it's not so obvious. It's not so <laughs> obvious. Yeah, because he'd lost a bit of position of trust with Laurent at that point as mm -hmm. well. So and he yeah. liked Damon at this point also. Yeah. So yeah, I like George. <laughs> um, 
So when it comes to uh, future projects, uh, will there be, there be if there is a chance yeah. <laughs> for any continuation of the Captive Prince or a kind of prequel focusing on uh, characters like Lauren's brother or a story that would, for example, redeem Regin, or at least explains how he became <laughs> such a villain? <laughs> oh, uh, no. But, well, I know to the last one. I, I mean, I just, yeah, I can't imagine a way to redeem him. Um, but, um, you know, I, I will never say never. So, like, maybe I might return to the series. But, you know, I like series that are finished. <laughs> I actually really don't like the kind of series that just go on endlessly and outstay their welcome. And I think that there comes a point in every long series where a new volume doesn't add something, it just takes something away. Mm. So I don't want to reach that point with Captive Prince. So I'm, I'm happy to let it be a, a finished series as is. I would only return to it if there was a, a story that I really wanted to tell, if there was something that I really, really wanted to do. And I, I don't have that idea um, yet. And Regent's Path is not one of them. <laughs> No, okay. absolutely not. You All know right. what? I've never had that request before, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Glad to be first. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so yesterday we announced uh, Dark Rise will be released in Poland at fall. Um, so what do you think is the biggest difference between Dark Rise and Captive Prince? Um, there is... Probably two. The first is that Dark Rise is on a much bigger scale, like it really is epic fantasy. Although there is a big fantasy world at stake in Captive Prince, the story has got a very personal focus, whereas Dark Rise, yeah, it's true epic fantasy. But I think, you know, um, I really like these tense relationships between characters. And I remember when I was building the relationship between Damien and Laurent and I wanted an enemies to lovers story and I thought like what's the worst thing that you could do to someone <laughs> that would really make them your enemy for life and at that time I thought like well what if you killed their brother and then that act left them in hell um, and that was what I came up with for Captive Prince and then uh, I was coming up with the enemies to lovers backstory in Dark Rise and I was like Oh, I have to come up with something way worse than oh that. Oh my god! <laughs> so I would say, yeah, the um, the connection between the characters is like even worse, even more disturbing, even more intense than the one between Damon Laurent and Captain Prince. That's gonna be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we are coming to the end. So we have like this um, little game. Yeah. <laughs> Um, just so uh, readers can know you better. Yeah. So um, we have prepared 10 short either or questions. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. <laughs> and um, you have to quickly choose one option, even yeah. if that's like uh, choosing lesser evil. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so ready? Yeah. Okay, early bird or night owl? Early bird. Seriously? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what was that reaction? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Vampire stuff. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> um, coffee or tea? Coffee. Reading or writing? Reading. Summer or winter? <sighs> summer, except that I'm from Australia and our summers <laughs> are a hellscape. So, winter, uh, Australian winter, but a European summer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, cat or dog? Dog. Mountains or sea? Mountains. City life or countryside? Uh, this one I can't choose. Half, <laughs> half the time in the country, half the time in the city. Okay. Uh, sweet or savory? Savory. Ebook or paperback? Paperback. Damon and Laurent. <laughs> <sighs> What's the reason for choosing them? Uh, let's say. Um... Like the person I want to hang out with? Yeah, let's, let's go with that like hang out with for an hour or I have to stay with them for like a week. <laughs> if it's hanging hour. out with them for an hour, I choose Laurent. If I have to stay with them for a week, I choose Damon. 
that's understandable. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> thank you for that. Um, have you ever wondered who would play uh, characters of Captive Prince uh, in the movie? Um, yeah, the problem is I don't like anyone. Mm. I'm too, like, ruthless. So anytime someone gives me a suggestion, I always feel like, oh no, that's not <laughs> that's not good enough. <laughs> I understand this uh, sentiment, but <laughs> what about actually, you? Have you? Is um, there anyone that you would cast as them? Well, actually, I was thinking about it, and yeah. um, we uh, decided to ask our readers. Oh wow! To cast five characters from yeah. Captive Prince. Yeah. And that was uh, Laurent, uh, Damon, Nikkei, Regin, and George. Yeah. And uh, well, the. The results were very scattered because <laughs> everyone have different idea yeah. but we managed to choose the winners yeah um for damon yeah there was a few a fierce will fight between actually uh joe uh manganello <laughs> oh yeah yeah well yeah at least he's italian yeah i yeah. get it yeah cool uh, but in the end um the top choice was uh young jason momoa <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so <laughs> There is something there. So Jason Momoa in like his Baywatch era. Yeah, Baywatch era, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were very uh, surprised for the pick for Laurent. Yeah. Uh, because they really went far back with the pick and they chose Swedish actor Bjorn Andersen. And Who's Bjorn Andersen? I had to Google um, it also. Is that from um, like War and Peace? I have no idea. I have to Google him because I didn't understand him. But there were really few suggestion, uh, su suggestions that he sh he would be a good Laurent. Yeah, okay. How old is he now, though? Uh, he's a grandpa. Yeah, <laughs> <So> okay. <laughs> it's a fantasy cast, I guess. Um, okay, so for any case, yeah. that was also... Also um, Bjorn Anderson? Or... No, no, no. Yeah. But that was also a surprise <laughs> to, to Shamlet. I guess I don't okay, know. Okay, who cast Timothy Chalamet as the case? <laughs> Maybe because he have a great hair or always yeah. looks like a little bit of a child. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's weird He's choices. Like, isn't he in his thirties? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's like uh, that's any, a Nick Cage lives uh, scenario. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, for region, yeah, we have Rufus Sewell. Oh, wow. And I think there's something actually fitting because he have this cunning look. He in does his have eyes. a cunning look, but I find that actor very attractive and I don't really <laughs> want like a hot regent. <laughs> good so point. this is the first casting that I really disagree <laughs> with. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. But uh, Regent have this um, way of. Um, it's true that he's he does have that kind of. He have to have some charm. He's good at showing like a coldness as well. That yeah. actor. So yeah, I I get it. That's quite interesting casting. I understand. Yeah, the, I understand it. Where it comes from, <laughs> for George. For George, yeah. And that's my favorite, actually. This is also. the one where I've got the least idea of who it could be. Okay, so uh, they went for I guess likability. Yeah. Um, and they choose um. Kit Harrington, so Jon Snow, <laughs> because he knows nothing. <laughs> because he knows nothing, <laughs> exactly. Especially he have such a bad life, like a love life. <laughs> Maybe that's uh, what we, uh, what, what inspired this uh, casting. Yeah, so. that's cool. Um, oh, but there's no Polish actors among the cast. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they were worried that you will not recognize uh, any actor. If you had to choose someone from Poland, can you think of someone? I actually have um, thought that he has black hair and black eyes, but I have, um, there's like this uh, musician in Poland yeah. that almost was selected for Eurovision last year, yeah. Jan. Yeah. And he have this cheeky look and he have these eyes that are can be dark, but like playful. I will show you later his yeah. picture. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that this is like... Um, when I saw him, I I I act like immediately thought of Laurent. Wow! All right, yeah, I'm I'm really interested. Um, we'll have to Google him later. Yeah. But I think the internet would come for you if you cast a brunette Laurent. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> I think like. Um, well, what's his hair length? This shoulder this, length. This, this, but but that's changing. Shoulder length. And I think there there was like a um, blonde face in his life, so. Mm. 
<sighs> nothing that uh, computer or special effects couldn't fix, oh, I yeah, guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, our fr our fr unfortunately, uh, we are slowly running out of time. <laughs> uh, so can you tell us something? That's a very lazy question, by the way. Uh, can you tell us something <laughs> about Captive Prince yeah. that you have never discussed before? <laughs> Maybe there's something you've been dying to talk about, hmm. but yet no one have ever asked the question. Why has no one ever asked me about Captive Prince? Um, hmm. Well... There was a lot of interviews, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so it's hard. So there's it's there's there's nothing that springs to mind. So what I will say then something that I haven't said before is about the Polish edition. Oh, that's good. So I got a chance to see the <laughs> interior illustrations for the new Polish special edition of Captain Prince and they are amazing. <laughs> um but um of all of the um interior illustrations there's this one incredible one of damon just sitting on, yeah, the, throne, on the throne but he's got yeah. this posture like <laughs> like this like really man <laughs> spreading swag. yeah <laughs> with real swag and um and i remember writing this that scene of him sitting on the throne and like coming up with that description of that sort of style of sitting and when i saw the illustration in there i was like oh yeah that's it exactly that's exactly what i was trying to capture in words so i was really excited to see that illustrated happy to hear that <laughs> it, mm, it was like how you imagined it yeah um and you never uh, been asked about redeeming origin so i guess oh yeah that's true we've already, we've already answered that one so, yeah <laughs> Um, in fact, I've never been asked anything about his history before oh, ever. No one has ever been like, oh, what no was the regent's childhood like? Or like, like well, this? he doesn't even have a name in the book. Oh, that's true. And I don't <laughs> think anyone's even asked me, like, what's his name? <laughs> like, yeah, he's no one's, like no one's one super villain in the yeah. story. Like, he doesn't have any good side of him, yeah. uh, like, portrayed in the story. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I really understand why they didn't yeah. <laughs> ask about it. Um, okay, so um, maybe what advice would you give uh, aspiring writers at this point? Um, I think um, I would give, well, here's the two pieces of advice that have been the most important for me. Um, one is um, I was the kind of writer that would start a lot of different projects and not finish them um, because it's easy to start and hard to finish. So I think you learn a lot more from finishing one bad book than you learn mm -hmm. from starting a hundred good books. So the piece of advice that I have that's stuck on top of my computer just says, it doesn't have to be good. It just has to be finished. <laughs> Better done than finished. Yeah, exactly. Then, uh, yeah, then and, perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then the other piece of advice that I would give is, um, you know, I often have especially... Um, writers from like marginalized backgrounds or LGBTQ plus writers ask me like, is it okay if I write this kind of thing or that kind of thing or I'm worried about? And um, so my other piece of advice would be just write the story you want to write. Don't gatekeep yourself. Like don't worry about what other people are going to, what limits other people are going to put on your writing. If, that, if those limits are going to be imposed, then let it happen later. <laughs> don't, don't start off with the limitations in your own head um, and just try and write as freely as you can. Um, so because, don't hold back any yeah, guilty don't, pleasure fantasy again. Exactly, you get. just don't, don't hold anything back. Um, and, um, and I'm really excited to see, you know, what um, the crop of, current aspiring writers, what kind of work that they're going to produce. Thank you for that advice. And um, thank you so much again for doing this, for sharing all those great information about uh, the story. Um, and um, well, I would also like to ask at the end <laughs> if uh, do you use sometimes, because you like travel, right? Yeah. 
Do you use sometimes those uh, experience as a research? I do, yeah. So I, I, I go on research trips a lot, quite a lot where I'll go to a location that I want to inform a scene or what have you. But then I also do, and um, because I can't see pictures in my head, um, I, I always have a journal with me and I'm, I'm always writing down like if I just observations of things so that I catch it in the moment in writing because I cannot catch it in my mind's eye. But I also, you know, I do a kind of research that I think of as like almost like a method acting style mm -hmm. of research. Whereas if there's a scene that is going to be in the book, I try and do it myself if I can oh. <laughs> so that I can experience what the feelings are like. So, for example, you know, I had a scene in Captive Prince where Laurent gets stabbed in the shoulder. And um, obviously I've never been stabbed in the shoulder and I've never stabbed anyone in the shoulder, but I bought a shoulder of lamb and I stabbed the lamb. Um, oh, just, wow. I just wanted to know like, you know, how, what, what is this feeling like? Um, and, or, you know, there's a, there's a scene where, there's a scene in Dark Rise where someone falls into a, like, like a frozen water. And it, I was writing it during COVID and I remember that I just, I just filled my bathtub up with ice cubes and then oh just like God. jumped in the bath. So I could feel that shock and just, and then like write down, you know, all of the feelings that I was experiencing to try and just get as much authentic detail as I can in the scene. Yeah. So you really write what you know. I try and know what I write. Yeah. <laughs> And that shows. Thank you. That was like the last question. So thank you again so much for uh, being here today, for answering all these questions. So thank you guys for watching. And for more information about uh, upcoming D Dark Rise premiere, please follow our social media and special website we prepared. It's darkrise.pl. And if you still didn't uh, get your new edition of Captive Prince, <laughs> Please uh, check out a uh, website zniepolonoksiążek.pl for uh, more information and the way to buy it. So thank you again. <laughs> thank you so much and thanks everyone for your amazing questions.